Coming up, we're going to break down the beginner's guide to running meta campaigns for your web to app campaigns. We're going to talk about campaign structure, creative testing, the events that you should be targeting, whether you're starting off or you're starting to scale. And if you're feeling a little bit bad about the performance of your web to app campaigns, well, we'll give you the numbers you should be aiming for. All that and so much more. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. I'm founder of AppMasters.com. And in this video, we're going to break down how to optimally run your meta campaigns for your web to app funnels. And if you're not considering web to app funnels, you really got to check it out because I think it is definitely the future. And the biggest apps are using web to app funnels to increase their revenues. And I brought on my friend and expert at web to app funnels, Igor from web to wave.com to break it all down for us today. Igor, welcome back to the show. Hi, Steve. Hi, everyone. Yeah, Steve, thank you for inviting. Always happy to be here and share, share some knowledge and help others to build web to app funnels. Um, Igor, I'm extremely excited because we are working with one of our clients on user acquisitions for web to app and they are using web to wave. And so this is very timely and I'm excited to learn from you today. So without further ado, take it over, my friend. Yeah. Okay. So today I'm going to tell you about the user acquisition for web to app. Uh, the first thing to like to, to know is mostly like I'd say 80 to 90 percent of the traffic that we get uh, to our web funnels is coming from meta ads. So we will talk a lot of um, um, meta things that you have to consider when uh, launching campaigns there. And another um, um, thing that you have to know that when you do user acquisition, it became different on every level of the of the budget that you have so when you launch um ads for first few thousand it's different than when you launch for like 50k a month or 100k a month so today we'll be talking about how you do the first steps like if you know how to do 100K per month, then you probably do not watch this video. You know how to do everything by yourself. So They're on an we'll island, Igor. They're on an <laughs> island right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, let's start. So I'm Igor, founder of Web2Wave. We are Web2App Funnels Builder. So you can go to us and create your quizzes, onboardings, paywalls by yourself, connected to external systems and uh, easily um, easily launch your funnels. If you talk about the market, it is growing. It's like very hot topic we see it from, from everywhere, from the clients that are coming to us, from the uh, content that uh, the, we see on the conferences or on YouTube. So like everyone is talking about that. And it's not just the hype. It's not new thing, I would say. It, it, it happened for like years. And there are already, we, we estimate the market to be like from five to 10 billions a year of the revenue that is going through web to app funnels for uh, mobile applications and similar subscription, uh, subscription businesses. So it is growing. When we talk about the um, conversions or in the funnel, they can be different uh, from project to project, from niche to niche, and you always have to focus on return on ad spend. This is like the main metric, but there are some proxy metrics in the in the middle of your funnel that you have to focus on. So you will lose around 50% of users on the first screen. They will drop off after the advertising, which is fine, I would say. On average, uh, with the paid traffic, you may lose the same amount on the App Store when you, from the advertisement, you send them to the App Store or Google Play. I mean, really, like one out of two users may drop off on this uh, step. Then to the end of the quiz, only 20, 30% um, of users will reach this point. 
again, it's completely fine. Then on the paywall from four to eight, sometimes 10, 12 percent of users will buy your uh, your subscription overall visitor to purchase conversion is around two percent it can be it, yeah igor can i ask you this so like let's say a thousand make the math easier a thousand people come into the first page conversion so let's just say 50 percent. so that's 500 of that 500 you say 20 to 30 percent not, uh, not, not from of them. So it will be uh, like uh, 200, 300 will finish uh, the quiz. Okay. Good. Nice. Okay. Way better. <laughs> Way better than starting yeah, from yeah, the 500 yeah. number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. the, the main problem is like to start the quiz. When they started it, they understand the value. And we discussed that in, uh, in some previous videos. So we will not focus here. Um, yeah. And also another important metric that you have to measure is how many people actually started to use your product after they made a purchase because if they didn't start it then the the chances that they will ask for a refund for chargeback are way more high so you have to focus on this part too so okay some benchmarks then when we do the traffic we at first like we set up the advertisement on Meta, TikTok, Kaplov, and Google, whatever source that we have. Then, well, in the in our case, it is web to wave but let's say it's just some other platform or your vibe coded uh, quiz. And there you do all the UTM um, magic to save all this information. You get all the events and you send these events to uh to meta directly from the funnel not from a mobile application and then after the user made a purchase you have to send them to a mobile application usually with adjust apps flyer branch uh you use definite deep links and you pass the user id web user id or of the user to mobile application and by that, they receive their subscription. You can get all the answers and synchronized statuses in Revenue Cat. So the th thing here is that all the events are sent not from mobile application. You don't send purchase events from mobile application because I have a lot of clients uh, who come in the beginning and say that, hey, we want to send our purchase events from a mobile application because like they kind of didn't understand how it works. You send all the events from the funnel. So, okay, we decided to set up our uh, campaign. At first, what we do, we, we get the link where we send the user. So we send the user to our quiz. We highly recommend to add all the UTM sources it may sound obvious, but still, you have to put all the UTM tags, and the more the more UTM tags you add, the more detailed information you will have. It's great to have performance on the creative level, on the ad level. You get this link, you put it into the meta campaigns about the creatives and the the other stuff. We will talk a little bit later. Now we are talking about like on the technical part of uh, this integration. I'd say so. You created your campaign, you created um, an ad set, and in the ad, you put the link. Then you have to select the um, event on which you want to optimize your campaigns. Um, there are two strategies, and we will cover them on how, um, how you can optimize your campaigns. But the thing is, we highly recommend to use standard meta events. You can create your custom event. You can name it as as you want. Then you go to Meta Pixel um, um, Source Settings, and then uh, you can uh, approve this event. We do not recommend to optimize campaigns on custom events because um, Facebook uh, the, the, they when they have standard events, they have like billions of these events and they know the purchase event. They know what can be before the purchase event. They know the behavior uh, of uh, the user who make these uh, purchases. So the algorithm will be way more better when you optimize onto standard events. You may have uh, custom events just as a proxy metric, 
but I'd say out of our like 60, 70 clients, only one or two clients decided to optimize onto some custom event. Uh, the main optimization will be purchase, um, but we'll discuss it a little bit later. So okay. the purchase event is uh, the, the most interesting because the purchase happens both on e-commerce sites and mobile applications and subscription sites. So um, Facebook has uh, way more purchase events than subscribe or start trial. Okay, we got the link. Then we put the optimization for our campaigns and we can launch multiple campaigns for multiple uh, multiple events. Then we have to implement our Metapixel. So we use Metapixel to send events from, um, from our quiz, from our website to, uh, to Facebook. And there are two ways how we send events. We can send browser events using Pixel. And then we can have uh, conversion API events that are sent through the server. We highly recommend to send both events from browser and from server. This way you will have, uh, you will feed more data to Facebook because you may have more data on, um, on uh, the browser side. The events will not be blocked because Facebook Pixel can be blocked by ad blocker, by private relay, by some VPNs because of it's like a tracking software. So if you will decide to send only browser events, not all of them may reach the Facebook. Uh, that's why you have to use a conversion API. But the, the, there is a browser events are better because they are delivered to Facebook faster. So we recommend um, creating a data set. Now they call data set before they were called pixel in events manager. You get the script, you install it on all your pages. You get an access token for server events and their API is relatively simple. Like it's easy to send these events. You just need to catch it on your, um, backend or in browser and send it to your server and from your server with any uh, programming language, you can send these events to conversion API. But you have to do the deduplication. So if you send the purchase event from browser and then to server, and if they will be not properly set up, Facebook will treat them as two events. And by that, your campaigns wrongly optimized. They will get two times uh, more events and um, they will distribute budgets uh, not the right way. Send events in real time. When setting up campaigns, use automatic advanced matching. Uh, and use Metapixel helper Chrome extension. We we have this question a lot of from, from a lot of clients when they want to test the event, they want to be sure that they are sent. Uh, no, yeah. I love it. Sorry, yeah. Igor. I was <laughs> you're like, why are you making a face? No, I love it. I didn't even know about this Metapixel helper Chrome extension. I'm about to Google it right now. Well. Yeah, you uh, Google it. So yeah. yeah, and there are pixel extensions for Meta, for TikTok, for Snapchat, for Uploven. So you just install it in Chrome and you see the lock of all the events with all the properties. It really helps to understand what is uh, what is sent. Yeah. So for the deduplication, so for deduplication, we pass the same parameters usually it's event id but also fbp and fbc fbc it's a fb click id so when we have this link and when we put this link into facebook facebook adds uh, additional parameter fb click id fbcl id where they put basically like unique identifier of the every click that the user made. And by this click, you can then attribute this user to a particular campaign on Meta. And when you send events from browser and server, you have to send the same FBC uh, to with, with every event. Every event has to have one event ID. So it can be, um, I don't know, like concatenated string of subscription ID and uh, the event name purchase, for instance, or user ID and 
uh, event name purchase, something like that. So they have to be different. So Facebook will treat them as one event and uh, it will merge them and it will treat them just as one event. A really important thing. But also when you send events to uh, Facebook to improve the matching, you have to provide uh, a lot of additional information that you may have for this user. So required uh, event ID, event time, which is simple. FBC is kind of simple. You get the FB click ID, you save it, and like you do some magic around that, but it's pretty simple. You send the URL where this event happened. You get the FBP cookie from Facebook Pixel, and you send it also in the Pixel and from the server. But then you have to add additional data. At first, like external ID, meaning the user ID from your system. You have to pass the information about country, city, state, zip code. So you better get some external tool to get this information by the user's IP address. You may save it to your server. You may not save it, but it's way more better to send it uh, with the Facebook events. Then email, first name, last name, for instance, if you do not ask the user the first name or last name, but they paid you with the Apple Pay, for instance, you can get their name from Apple Pay and send this information to uh, to Facebook. And it will increase the quality of the events that you send. Also, you can send gender, order line item, subscription ID, so the information about what they actually purchased. And obviously you have to send the currency and the amount if this event is about uh, making a purchase or related to starting the purchase because like you can send currency and demand for the main event uh, at payment in four or initiate checkout that happened uh, that happens before uh, the payment but still have this information. Okay, so we made the technical integration. We got the link. We started to send events from browser and server. Then we have to set up our campaigns. <music>